Oh, good to, good to be in the house of God. Good to be uh, in the presence of all you men. I got a big, mean echo uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, welcome, guys, to uh, Men of a Higher Standard, a ministry of Turning Point Fellowship. All right, uh, amen. <laughs> It's the beginning of the year, man. This is uh, uh, our first, our second one of, yeah. second one of the, of the year. So just, uh, guys, enjoy the ride, man. Enjoy the journey you're on, amen? Yeah. It's a journey of life. And uh, yeah. I want you guys to know that you're going to have your ins and your outs, you know. You're going to have your, your lows and you're going to have your highs in life. But, you know, just keep on going, man, like a, like a, like a watch. You know, it says a, 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 time, a time, like, like time, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a lick, but keep on ticking in Jesus' name. <laughs> we we got to be like that, amen. Hallelujah. I'm gonna be talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom that lives inside of a man. That God has given us principles and truths in the kingdom. That how men should live and how we should. Uh, characterize ourselves through the word of God and by the word of God. They should know us by the spirit of God, by the truth of God, and the life that we live in Christ yeah, Jesus. Yeah, right. Amen. It's not about, you know, what we're saying. It's about what we're living. Yeah. You know, some of you guys know, you know, it's about doing it, you know, being about it in Jesus' name. And that's what we have to do as Christians. We got to be about it. Yeah. You know, we already done enough talking. I said, we already done enough talking. Amen. <laughs> now it's time to live the life in, in Christ, you know. Uh, do you guys all know each other? Well, uh, I know you know your little group right there. He's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, go, go around and introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, you know. Man, get out of your comfort zone and just say hi to somebody. Yeah. Go over there and say hi to them. Say hi to them. To those, say hi. My name's, tell them your name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hey, Pastor. <laughs> hey, they call me Tyrone. <laughs> Amen. Good to be in the house of God. You know, it really brings me joy to see men uh, to come into the presence of God. It, re it really does. Uh, it's so can, I can only imagine what it does for our Heavenly Father. Yeah. That when he sees men getting together, raising hands, worshiping him, you know, not worshiping ourselves or who we are, but worshiping who he is, that he is God. Yeah. Amen. He made us. He, if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be here. Come on. You know, uh, honestly, uh, a lot of us have stories and experiences that we went through in our lifetimes, you know, and uh, we made it by the grace of God, you yeah. know. Uh, I'm not saying because we're tough guys and rough guys. Other things could have happened. I almost got hit by a car about three years ago on my, on my bike. I drive a Harley, and, and I said, I'm going to go. It's green, but I said, wait. You know, someone told me, wait. Wow. And I waited, you know, and when I waited like three seconds, a car just drove by like going about 60, 70 miles an hour. Boom. He just ran a red light. I said, if I would have went out there, he would have, I said, it would have been done, you know. So God watches over us, yeah. you know, no matter what goes on in our lives and no matter who we are because he just loves us, yeah. you know. So I was just saying, thank you. <laughs> he started shaking after something like that. But uh, I just want to encourage you guys through the word of God today that I am speaking to men. They are young men here, but we're going we're gonna to speak to them uh, as men. This is my grandson. He knows how I speak, and I'll, I will speak to him like a, like a young man. I'll speak to him. Like, I'm not going to speak to him like a little boy, you know, like a little 5, 6, 10-year-old, 12-year-old. I'm going to speak to him like a, a young man, just like you guys. Some of you guys are young men to me, you know, and some of us are seasoned men, you know. <laughs> so, But I'm going to speak to you guys in that manner, but uh, I want you guys to know the truth. You know, what you do with the truth, that's up to you. 
It's not up to me. I'm just going to preach the gospel. I'm going to preach the truth. But it's up to you how you apply it to your lives. You know, we're not going to be able to point fingers at anybody. We're not going to be able to say, oh, my wife, it's the woman you gave me, Lord. We're not going to be able to say stuff like that. You know, you're going to like, I made some decisions. I made some choices. And, you know, now it's time to change some things in my life, you know. Uh, not just always for the bad, but for the good. Time to change for the good, you know. Amen. That's how our life changes. My life changed because I made a choice to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That was 29 years ago. And Dominic, 29 years. I've been serving the Lord, man. Sober, straight now, man, for 29 years, man. It's just uh, the, by the grace of God. By the grace of God, he kept me. And he's kept every one of us here, no matter what, you know. None of our roads are, are straight. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to walk the straight line. Go ahead, walk it. <laughs> yeah, and it's not going to be a straight line. We're going to go like this. We're going to go up and down. We're going to go backwards for a little bit, and then we're going to come back forward. But uh, we got to learn to just stay on the, on the line and know no matter what goes on in our lives, no matter what goes in our lives, the goal is Jesus Christ, Amen. to see eternal life. Imagine to see Jesus face to face. That's going to be mind-blowing, you know. It's going to be something so exciting, so beautiful, you know, that you'll get to see him face to face. Uh, even at the time, as a, as a pastor, you get kind of fearful, you know. Like, I hope I did it right, Lord, you know. I hope I'm living right before you, you know, when you speak to him. And I hope you guys probably have those conversations too, you know. Lord, I'm sorry, man. I blew it. I'm going to blow it. I can be a knucklehead. I can be a hard head at times in our lives, amen. Yeah, I'll raise my hand, you know. Because I always ask the Lord, why do the knuckleheads come to our church? He's, and he says, because you were a knucklehead. <laughs> you were hardhead. You were ethical. You were stubborn, you know. And you didn't want to learn. So God chose all the knuckleheads. I know some of you guys say, I'm not a knucklehead. You're not now, you know, but you were at one time. Amen. Amen. You're free now in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk about the kingdom of God, but we're going to get into worship and praise. Tomorrow we're going to have our potluck. If you guys are more than welcome to come out with your, with your families, your friends, whoever you want to come out with, come by yourself. doesn't matter. It's a potluck. And uh, we're going to have, uh, what's it called? A tailgate, right? A tailgate. A tailgate. Uh, yeah, we're going to have be wings, chicken, uh, chicken wings, chili beans. Hey. We gotta, we gotta say this. We gotta, we gotta get something figured out for this brother. He's a vegan, you know. <laughs> Guys, bring him, a, bring him a salad or something, brother. Somebody bring him something. <laughs> you expect him like this, <laughs> and he's like this. <laughs> But uh, the Lord is good, so that's what we're going to be doing there. And then on uh, uh, the 11th, I think it is the 11th, right, the Super Bowl? Is that? It's on the 11th. We, we do that, and all the, all the different people in the church wear different jerseys. They wear their free, uh, favorite jerseys. It's going to be a, a lot of black and silver, but there's going to be a lot of blue and gold, too, in Jesus' name. There it is right there, yeah. We're going to wear blue and gold right there, you know. Yeah. Blue and silver. Oh, yeah, there's probably one or two of those here. Amen. Art, Arts Clan is all cowboy fans, huh? Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. How, how can you guys from, how can you be from Orange County and like the Dallas Cowboys? I don't understand. How does that happen? Oh, you like, you like the team. The, oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you guys did good. You guys did good. You guys had a good run. You know. No, it was. It was a good run. You made the playoffs, you know. I thought you guys were going to Super Bowl at the beginning of the season. I thought you guys would be the team. team. Uh. <laughs> Again? <laughs> sound like the, yeah, yeah, you sound like the Raiders now. Raiders win five games and they're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, eight games? All right, very good. You're not a football fan, though, right, Miha? Wrestler, huh? A real man's uh, sport right there, baby. Yeah. Yeah, when I played high school football, I went out to the soccer, uh, to the wrestling team, 
for like two days. Then I told the coach, eh, this is not for me. I said, these guys are studs. I said, I said I'm a football player. That's, that's crazy. That's rough, boy. You know, I couldn't even do the two uh, work, the, you know, two, two times on the, uh, yeah, on the mat, man. I said, that was crazy, man. So just did football, win football. But he's a wrestler. That's why, yeah. You got to be tough to be a wrestler, man, in high school. Yeah, real tough. But Father, we just, Father, thank you and we bless you for this day. I thank you for every life that is represented here. I thank you for every man, Father, every uh, head of the house, Lord God. I pray for blessings upon him right now. That your, purest, your peace would come upon them, Lord God. That your peace would surpass their understanding, Lord, that they won't even know why they're walking in peace when they should be angry or bitter or upset. But no, Father, you've kept them all this time. So I thank you for your spirit that lives within them, the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, that they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They believe in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would speak to every one of them. That today they would encounter the living God through the power of your word and the power of your spirit, my Father. For we know it is not by power, Father, it's not by might, but it's by your spirit that we have our breath, our life, and our being. I thank you for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. As we repent of our sins, Father, we've fallen short of your glory. But we thank you for your grace that keeps us, your goodness and your mercy that follows us all the days of our lives. Where would we be without your grace, Lord? If it wasn't for your mercy, where would we be, Lord? We just thank you, Father who you are. So we're here, Father. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we know it is the power of salvation unto whosoever would believe, Father, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile, Lord. And we are the Gentiles, Lord. So I pray right now in Jesus' name that you give us understanding a wisdom and understanding a justice, a righteousness of your word, Lord. We want to understand what's being said. So open our hearts, open our minds, our ears, that we would understand the salvation of Jesus Christ. We want to be more like you, Lord. We want to be more like you. We thank you that we've been chosen, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And when that faithful day comes, Lord God, our name will be called out. Well, here, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my rest. So we're going to bless you with praise and worship, with a song, with a clap of hands, with a dance, Lord God, with the lifting of hands. We're going to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. We're glad, we're happy that we came, Lord. Glad to be in your house. Thank you, Father, for watching over our wives, our children, our grandchildren, our households, Lord. Thank you for watching over us, Father, to and from this place. That angels camp about us, Lord, protecting us and watching over us. We love you, Jesus. I love you, my Father. So I ask, Father, for the blessings of your word on us all in Jesus name and all the men said amen, amen. hallelujah praise the Lord bless the Lord thank you Father you guys are free to worship here at the house of Turning Point Fellowship you can clap your hands you can shout a glory hallelujah amen you can run if you feel like running if you get the unction to run run baby if God says run run you know amen Let's get excited. Let's get excited, man. This is your time as we praise and worship. Just because you're surrounded by 30 men, don't worry about them. Worry about yourself and God. He's going to begin to 
speak into your spirit. You're going to begin to lift praise up unto him. Don't worry about the other man. Just do what you need to do with God, okay? Be free in the house of God.
He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to receive our praise. He's worthy of our might. He's worthy of our strength. He's worthy of our reverence. I don't know about you, but if God is for me, no one can be against me. Thank you, Father. I said, if my God is for me, no one can stand against me. Hallelujah. Not the government, you, not Lord. any sickness, not the devil, not nothing can stand against me because of my God. He's the great I am.
guys have another one? You have another one? Go ahead. You guys want to come to the front? Come on to the front. Something you've never done before. You've got to stretch your faith. Come on out, man. The closer you get, the better it is. God will bless you. For me, for all of us. But I feel I'm saying that you can't get close enough. You can't get too close. There's no such thing as too close. You cannot get too close to God. The, holder, the tighter you hold on to him, the closer you get to him, the more he can be able to impart into us, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you don't hold us back, Lord God, that that curtain has been torn, that veil has been ripped, Lord God, and we have straight access into your presence, into your throne room, Lord God, as we enter into your throne room. Right here is your throne room, Lord. Right now, we're able to enter in into your presence, Lord God. He's here. He's here. He's calling you to get too close. I challenge you to get too close. You can't get close enough to God. Thank you, Lord.
and nothing compares to you, my God. What it is to be in your presence, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. That these men, Father, would feel your presence. For we know, Father, that we don't live by our feelings, Lord, but we do have feelings, Lord. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Sense your power, your grace, most of all your love, Lord. I pray that you would open up their hearts to your love, the agape love, a love that has no conditions, a love that says loves us everlasting, Lord. It's a forever loving. I pray, Father, they come, Father, to seek you. Even if they don't know you, Lord God, I ask that you reveal yourself to them. That today is their opportunity of life. And for us that are here, Lord God, that know you, I pray that we surrender, that we would raise our hands up, just surrender all that we are, all that we do, all that we think, Lord, our spirit, our soul, and our body, and we would just surrender. I thank you for the truth, Lord, the truth that will be spoken today, Lord, the truth that will be in their hearts, never to be forgotten ever again, Lord. They'll hear the truth, and the truth will set them free. And I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You guys can make your way back to your seats if you like. We'll go ahead and release the worship team nice and quietly, please.
want to, I just want to say this to you guys, some of you guys that are here, that are uh, distanced from God by your own choice, not because God is drawn away from you, because God is always drawing closer to us every day. We wake up every day with new mercies upon us. The mercy of God that follows us all the days of our lives, even if you don't recognize it, that God showed you mercy today. He could have took your life, but he chose not to. He chose to give you life. And that's what I want to encourage you guys that if you guys see us raising our hands and bowing before God, like, what's all that about? I just want to explain that to you guys. This right here is a, an act of being humble before God because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know how we celebrate when a, 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 celebrity, a, a celebrity comes in? We got all excited if we see Kobe or, you know, I know I did. I went in, I was in the tunnel and I'm over there giving them high fives and all, the Lakers and all that stuff. You know, I was all excited and everything. Yeah, you know, like if they were someone important in my heart, like, yeah, you're not important, but I'm going to give you high five. I like you. <laughs> but uh, like when God comes in, he's a king. He's the one that kept us. You know where you could have been, but God kept you. When the enemy tried to snatch you out of God's hand, yeah. God said, this one belongs to me. Right. And no matter, even if you don't worship, if you don't raise your hands because your heart is a little hard, and I'm not being, I hope I'm not being ugly at you guys. Because it happens that, you know, your heart gets, even as a, as a believer, even a person who goes to church every Thursday, every Sunday, you know, even who reads his Bible and all that, sometimes your heart can still be hardened toward God. That God wants to tell you something. He wants to say something to you, and you're saying no in your heart. You might say no out of your mouth, but you're saying no in your actions. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go up there. People are going to see me. I'm going to look silly to get on my knees before other people, before other men. Come on, man. We're rough guys. We're tough guys. No, but that's who we do it in front of. I worship God because who he is. And I remember what he's done for me. I remember I was lost. And he, and he saved my life. Man. I asked for forgiveness and he gave me forgiveness. That's mind blowing, huh? A little rascal like me that you would say, forgive me. And he says, I forgive you. And he knows that you're going to fall. He knows you're going to uh, uh, falter. He knows you're going to commit sin. God already knows all that. You guys act like you, oh, I can hide from God. He knows that you're going to do it before you even do it. Before you even speak a word, God knows your thoughts. He knows your words. He knows everything about you. The deepest secrets you have, he knows them. Things that we hold against, or not against, but, uh, hold from our wives, he knows. He, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. <laughs> he he, he knows that stuff. Every lie, every uh, rascal thing you did in your life, he knows that. And guess what? He already forgave you. Dominic, it's all done, man. And that's why if we really have that revelation of that, of knowing that, you would raise your hands. If you really had the revelation of God, you would bow before God. You just say, man, he forgave me. You know what you've done, Emmanuel, you know? We ain't got to put it out there. You, you know what you've done. And God said, I forgive you. And he loves you and he hugs you. Yeah. Men are afraid to hug each other because it, it's, a, it's a macho thing. And get up here, baby boy. This is my grandson. Get up here, baby. And this is how, I, I've taught this many times, right, for years. This is how macho men hug. I love you too, brother. <laughs> Because we're, we're afraid to do this. Afraid to kiss each other in the cheek because you know you're queer, you're gay. No, I'm being real, right? Because men don't do that stuff. But the Bible says to, to, uh, reach, to, to receive one another with a holy kiss. And I'm not saying on lips and stuff like that. Some people do do that. 
If you're close to a man, you can kiss him on his lips, right? Because they love each other. You know, I used to kiss my tíos when we were young. You kiss your man on the, on the lips. They loved you, you know. You were, you, my dad's son, so, they, you know, they, they respect you. They honor you. They, my dad was the oldest, so they respected his kids. And we as, as men, I'm speaking to men, and I know some of you guys aren't at that level of things like that. No one's better. No one's, you're just not there yourself at that level of hugging somebody just, you know, instead of one arm, two arms. Walking it up to somebody and say, you know, forgive me, brother. I blew it. My, my character, my, 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 my mouth, brother, I ask you for apologies. And don't say okay to that, brother. Because you're giving them permission to do it again. Just say, I receive that. I receive your forgiveness, brother. Because now you kept him accountable for his words. Next time he's going to say, I'm not going to say that. I'm just going to be quiet. We're not going to get angry. We're not going to behave like the world. Amen. I'm going to behave like a Christian. Yes, sir. And like I said earlier, we all falter. We all fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. But God's grace is sufficient for us. His love is, covers any sin that you ever committed. And you guys, I know you guys, a lot of you guys think that God can't forgive a child molester. He can. I know it's hard to, to, fashion, to fathom that. Yeah, fathom that. It's hard to one who, you know, uh, beat up your, your daughter or, or beat up your wife, you know, something like that. It's hard to walk in that forgiveness. You know, someone who has done you dirty, straight out, you know, and you got to you gotta walk in that forgiveness. Sometimes you don't want to, man. I've, <laughs> I've argued with God like an idiot. I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that, Lord. I'm not. And he says, okay, then you just go and stay in your little corner, stay in your misery, stay in your bitterness, and you get amargado. You get a little sour, you know. Someone tastes you like, oh, that brother tastes like a lemon. <laughs> He's sour. But we got we to gotta how to learn how to walk in the love of God. Amen. And it's hard. But it can be done. Amen. There's nothing impossible for God. Amen. Every sin on this earth has already been committed. There ain't no new sin that's never, been hap that's never happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. Amen. Everything's already been said. You know, we get these guys that are teaching and they're deep. Oh, my brother, hear that word? That brother was deep. That's the first time you heard it. But it's been said before. It's been preached before. It's been taught before. It's been lived before. You know, but it's new for you. So if it's new for you, then, you know what? Thank God it added to me. Because a lot of us, we live in a, well, all of us, not <laughs> some of us, all of us live in a, in a fallen world full of sin, full of darkness, full of wickedness and perverse, perversion, you know. And we, some of us like living in that. Pastor Angel did too. I used to love that stuff. Until it started reckoning my life. It started just messing me up mentally, emotionally. So I knew that I needed a savior. Because I couldn't save myself. I tried many times. Tried diets. Didn't work. You know. Tried giving up drugs. Didn't work. Tried to give up alcohol. Tried to give up not cheating on my wife. I tried all that stuff. It didn't work. You blow it. You're a blow it. So you, you recognize I need a savior. I need someone to save me. And some of you made me did all that. But you were greedy in, a, in other things. Some of you guys are a, a greedy for yourself, not just money, just selfish, full of pride. The world, you know, uh, uh, how do you say? It? Goes around, yeah, the world goes around you, but it doesn't. Only in your little mind it does. You know, that's why I say your little mind, little mind, little mind. Because if we saw God, God puts us in the middle of his hands, and it's a little dot, and we're right there complaining, God's like, what do you complain about? I got you in my hand. And he watches over us and he takes care of us. Amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah, we're funny people. <laughs> men are real funny, especially men. 
You know, we think the ladies are funny. They laugh at us. <laughs> They're funny guys. <laughs> These guys are a trip, you know. But God has set us up not for failure. Because we have friends that have said that many times. You set me up for failure, you know. God sets us up for success. And every time we fall, every time we falter, every time we fail, every time we sin, it's a step to learn. You know, when, when, you, when you blow it, this sin now, it's, it's, you're going to learn from there and you're going to go higher. And you're going to blow it again in this level, then you're going to go to this one. And, and you're going to blow it right here, but I'm higher than what I used to do, be and you're still going to blow it. And then you're going to get here that you finally going to say, I learned something. I've told many youngsters, I've been ministering for 20 years and been saved for 29 years. And I told many ministers, at 20 years old, you think you know it all. Right? You guys remember your 20s? You guys, were, we were all know-it-alls, know right? We knew it all. Your dad tried to tell you something, your Theo's or something. I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. You know, my dad said, yeah, yeah, ese que sabe todo. Y no hace nada. You know, you know everything, but you don't do nothing about it. Then in your 30s, you start learning a little bit. You start learning a little bit. You know, at 35, you think you know something. Like, oh, I learned. No, you're still learning. At 40, by 40, you better start learning some things at 40. In your 50s, you already have been learned. You better have learned something. I mean, you better have some wisdom in you. You better have some experience. You already got to be, you got to be established by then. I'm giving you a lot of grace there at 50, you know, right? Because we already should have been ex established a long time ago, but 50. By 60, 70, if you don't know that stuff, then I will call you a fool. You're just a fool. Because if you act like a fool, then the Bible says that they're going to take a, a whip to your back, you know. It's like taking a whip to your back. But he says, but if you bless a, a man with intelligence and you instruction, that he grows, and he grows wiser. We're not those foolish guys we used to be. Amen. I hope not. I pray not in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope we're not doing the same things we used to do in our 20s. We're already 40. That's 20 years ago. We're already in our 50s. We're already in our 60s. You know, we should be way better than that by now, you know, in Jesus' name. So I want to talk to you guys about kingdom, kingdom living, uh, principles of, of what God wants in our lives. If you uh, put me on uh, Joshua 24, go, uh, I'm going to go from 13 to, yeah, let's go 16, 13 to 16 if you don't mind. If you have your Bibles, open them up. Joshua 24, 13 through 16. You know, God remind, was reminding the people here that everything they build with their hands, the cities, the, the roads, the homes, the working of the land, sometimes we think we do all that stuff. You do do it, but God gives you the wisdom and the understanding. We gutted this church when they bought us this church. We gutted it all. We, all the walls were... Taken down, the stage was down, we rebuilt everything. Everything you see, we did it from the ground up. And it took us men, right? It was a lot of work. And we did it like in 100 days. I wanted to shoot for 90 days. That, my shot was 90 days. And pastors that were here with me were like, Pastor, you're crazy. 90 days? I said, no, these guys are young, man. These guys are studs. These guys are tough men, you know what I mean? They're workers. They worked. They worked hard. And the same thing here. He says right here, God is uh, uh, making a covenant. 
with a, I can't pronounce his name, uh, Shishkim, Shishkim, I'm going to spell it for you real quick. Shikim, is that how you say it, Shikim? Shikim, thank you. As you can see, I'm not an educated man, but I am anointed by the Spirit of God, amen? So he says right here, I have given you a land for which you did not labor, cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves, which you did not plant. That's us. I says, go to the next one there, Mio, please. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord means to reverence God, to have a, a holy fear for God. Not the God like, oh, he's going to punish me. He's going to, no, no, strike me down. He, he can't do that. He, he can do whatever he wants. He's God Almighty. He can take your life and cast it to hell if he chooses to, but he doesn't. He chooses to give us grace and love. And you know what? A way out. That's what he wants. He wants you to choose the way out. Amen. Don't choose the way in to hell, you know. So he says, now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in uh, sincerity, in, the, in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river. And in Egypt, serve the Lord. Stay, stay right there. Serve the Lord. We were taught traditions. We were taught to praise to certain things and do certain ways. And that wasn't the way of the Lord. But we thought it was because it was religious. But I thank God for that. I really do because I look back at my life and I talk to the Lord about it. And I come from the Catholic background. And I, I, I was born in the Catholic and raised a Catholic until like I was 17, 18 years old that I just started living my own life. There was no fear of God, no nothing. It just, the devil just had my butt way out there losing, losing my soul. And I began to think about that. And I, when I spoke to the Lord, he says, all that right there wasn't for lost. That gave you a, a fear of who I was, but not a reverence of who I was. Because you know, y'all, well, I would say, Cuidado, Dios te va a castigar. God's going to punish you. Better watch yourself, boy. You know, and she would, God's going to punish you, little boy. You know, you're like, okay, okay, okay. I think I'm a, more afraid of her than I was God, you know. <laughs> and he says, put away these things, put these gods away that your father served on the other side of the river in Egypt. Egypt represents our sinful nature, our sinful lives that we lived before, and God delivered us from that. And we're no longer to worship those things now. We're to worship only God himself. He's the only one to send his son on that cross to die for our sins. No one else died on that cross. No other gods, no saints, not my father, not my mama, didn't die on that cross. Symbolically, we did. The Bible says that we symbolically died on that cross as, sin did, as Christ did. But he's the only one that physically died on that cross for all of our sins. So no one should get credit but who? Jesus. Jesus. We're giving credit a lot of ways out, and it shouldn't be only one. Amen. There's not a lot of ways to heaven. There's only one way. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through through me, through the Son of God. That's the only way to heaven. There's no other way to heaven. I know we've been taught that there's other ways. There's, there's only one road. How can this be? How can this be? Because he's God. And that's what he chose. This is his plan. This is his will. This is his purpose. It's not your plan. It's not your will. He made it your purpose. He dropped purpose in you. He dropped the will of him in you. Because you had no will. The devil had you like a little puppet. Moving you whenever which way he wanted to. And some of you, he still has got, got you moving wherever he wants you to go. You know, and we have to go to God. So here we go. He says, uh, thank you. you know. He says, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, if it seems wrong for you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day. Today, he's telling you, you choose today. 
You choose. No one else chooses. No one else chose for me. Not my wife. My wife can't make a choice for you. Because when you die, you're going to stand before yourself butt naked. Ain't nobody going to be with you. You came in butt naked by yourself, you're going to leave this place butt naked. When they put you on that little stainless steel flap, it's going to be cold. Well, you ain't even going to feel it, but you're going you're to be there butt naked all by yourself. And only God's going to be in front of you. And he's the only one that's going to judge you. He's not going to judge you for all the good you did. He's going to judge you for how you love the Lord, Amen. how close you were to him. Because all of us are going to say, Father, I knew you. I knew your name. I did miracles in your name. We, we, we cast out demons in your name. And you'll say, I never knew you. What do you mean? It's me. I don't know you. You worker of iniquity. You worker of sin. And that's why we have to make a choice. Today he says, if it seems evil for you to serve the Lord, choose yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which are your fathers who served, that you were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites whose land you dwell, you dwell in their land. Are you going to still worship what they're doing? Amen. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is Joshua. Joshua is making a declaration. It's a personal direction, uh, uh, declaration first. It's personal. And then it becomes publicly. Then you begin to tell your friends, your, your friends, your comadres, your people you hang out with and your coworkers, you know, I'm a Christian. Like, well, I don't want to tell him I'm a Christian because I don't live like a Christian. You're going to have to make a choice. When I was an outside salesperson, I used to tell all the people all the time, I'm a Christian, boy, Cristiano. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we'll see. We'll watch. We'll listen. That way they got me sharp. You got to be sharp in front of them because they're going to judge you, right? The world will eat you up and spit you out, boy. Like, oh, muy cristiano. Real good. Even though they're not the judge, but they're going to judge you anyway. Right? You get saved, all of a sudden you're married and your wife ain't saved. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> oh, muy cristiano. No, all of a sudden, Mr. Hallelujah. You know? And they start doing all that. Yo, you know that little tongue stuff. So. nee, 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 nee. That all happened to me. Yeah, and like, yeah, I am. I'm a Christian. I'm spirit-filled, born again. I love the Lord. Amen. I'm going to serve God. Like I served the devil out there, I'm going to serve God way better than that. Amen. And, amen. And we have to make, exactly, amen. We have to make this choice uh, here before God. And what Jesus is teaching us and what he's treating us uh, well, yeah, treating us in, in, in the truth, amen, is that he came to establish his kingdom, the kingdom of his father here on earth through the truth of the scriptures. That's why it's called born again. You're born again and you have to be a new person. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new now. You have to begin to live and think differently, but it takes the word. It takes the word to renew our minds. If we don't renew our minds, if we're not in this Bible, if we're not listening to it on the, on the radio or CD, I, I'm, I'm dating myself. They probably ain't even on my CDs, you know, uh, whatever it is, you know. What it is it now on the, on the phone, right? What's it called? Streaming. Streaming and all that stuff. Okay. I wouldn't even know how to do that. If you had to pay me $100, I wouldn't know how to do it either. You know how to do that? Oh, jeez. What? <laughs> but, uh, 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 because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how you're going to grow, Renee, is by reading the word to yourself loud enough that you could hear it. You don't have to say it loud to everyone else, but you're reading it to yourself. You're feeding yourself. Because I don't think you still get fed by people. Right? Your wife doesn't feed you, right? 
unless he's trying to spoil you or wants something from you, you know? <laughs> right? Sometimes you say, hey, the food's on the stove. Go ahead and feed yourself. <laughs> wow. Sitting there by the table ready to eat. Well, go serve yourself. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we have to serve ourselves. We have to eat the word of God. We have to. No one has to. No one can do that for us. We have to do that. And this is how we grow. We grow by the reading of the word and the renewing of the mind, and our lives begin to transform. Little by little. And I'll say for a month or two, you're doing great. Three months you're doing, man, you're on fire. Jesus. You know, everywhere you go, you walk in the liquor store. We used to walk in, Jesus is Lord, you know. Yeah, then they see you in the sixth, you know, sixth month and seventh month, and you're going through something, the doubt, disbelief, and the enemy starts telling you, like, this ain't happening. It ain't for real. You know, you had an experience. It was good. It's all over now. You know, you're a sinner. You're going to blow it, man. You blew it, dude. You know, and, you know, he's talking to you, and you got a beer in your hand, like, <laughs> wow. But God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is, is sufficient. His word begins to transform our lives, begins to change our lives, the way we think, the way we act. You're going to fall. You're going you're gonna to scrape your knees. You're going to scrape your elbows. You're going to cut your hand, spiritually speaking. That's going to happen. But you got to keep going. You can't give up because you blow it. You can't. Where's the dog in you? Where's the fight in you? Okay, when we pet bull, a cup, a yan here, there, you know, all of a sudden you give up because a little chihuahua bites your ankles, you know. <laughs> right? Those are the dogs that bite the most. People get bit by chihuahuas and poodles more than any dog, you know. They bite you, but you don't feel it because they're little bites. You kick them like, get out of here. But you wouldn't do that to a Rottweiler or to a pet bull, you know, because they lock up on you. Like the enemy he tries to lock up on you. And you got to let that stuff go. And we have to continue to go forward. And we're talking about the kingdom of God. Yeah, I'm going to read these little notes. The, the, the uh, phases, the phrases, kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, the kingdom. They occur in the New Testament over 90 times. In the book of Acts, they, they showed the, the kingdom of God. They showed its, his works in the kingdom, uh, in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the acts of the Holy Spirit. They'll say it's the acts of the disciples, but it's, it's the acts of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. We couldn't live this life, Junior, today without the Holy Spirit. You tried to live without it, right? And we fall on our face. We couldn't be born again without the Holy Spirit. You can't even say the name of Jesus Christ if you're not born again. You can't even say, if you're not born again, you can't even say Jesus Christ is my Lord. You can say Jesus is Lord because the devil can say that. But the devil can't say Jesus is my Lord. I've tested those things before. And you test the spirits like that because the Bible says test the spirits. So you, you got to be able to tell yourself that Jesus Christ is my Lord. I've done it here with people we pray for. I say, can you say Jesus is the Lord? And they try. Last, like three weeks ago, that lady, remember that lady? She couldn't do it. I said, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. And she was all, had piercings all on her tongues, the top of her mouth and everything when she's talking like, mm, I'm looking at her and she's looking away from me. She's looking at me. And I said, are you born again? Are you a Christian? She says, I am a Christian. I said, Jesus Christ, your Lord, can you say Jesus is Lord? Her lips are moving, nothing saying. She believed in all kinds of stuff. She was all confused, all messed up. She believed in reading the cards, the crystals, and confessing this and confessing that, and you know, burning this and burning that, and she was going to be saved. Yeah, and that's what I told her. I said, that's witchcraft. She says, I believe in white witchcraft. I said, ain't no white or black witchcraft. It's just witchcraft. I said, you're just operating as a witch. 
And I knew she was never going to come back after that because she says, this is my church. Because she she'll sit over there, you know, where my son is sitting. She'll sit over there. And when she came up, I knew she, what she was coming up for. And Brian goes, she's coming for this pastor. I said, I know. I know what she's coming for. We have to be ready at all times, and we have to make a choice ourselves. We have to declare out of ourselves, as jo uh, uh, Joshua did, as for me and my host, we will serve the Lord. Amen. you got to make it personal, and then you got to make it to your family. Amen. you got to be able to, to declare this to your family, to your friends, to your uncles, yeah. your cousins, yeah. your co-workers. When they ask you, are you Cristiano? Uh, I go to church. That wasn't the question. Are you Cristiano? Yeah. Yeah. I pray. Are you a Christian? We should be able to, all, every one of us in this room, if we're Christians, we should say, I'm a Christian. Amen. And we don't have to say, you know, but I'm not, not perfect. God knows that. You ain't got to tell them that. They know that too because that's, that's why they're questioning you. And it's okay if they question you. They question our Lord. They're going to question us. Yes, Amen. So we just have to know who we are in Christ. Jesus introduced and taught the kingdom of God. He taught it as a new way of living, and that's why the old religious people, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they had a hard time understanding what he was saying. Why do you speak in puzzles? Why do you speak in uh, hindered, uh, hiding uh, words? Why do you speak like that? Because their ears were closed to the things of God. They couldn't hear Jesus' stories. They didn't want to. And that's why he came to bring a new way of life. He was fulfilling the Old Testament. He wasn't getting right away with it, getting away with it, getting rid of it. He was fulfilling it. He was a living word. So when the devil tried to tell him things, like he's like, guy, you don't even know who you're talking to. Because the devil... Believes his lies so much that he believes that he's God and Jesus is not, you know? Because if you read Matthew 3, it says, this is my son in whom I'm well bleed, please. They're talking about Jesus. And then you go to 4 and where he's baptized, it's like, or no, when he gets tempted, he says, if you are the son of God. Everyone just heard the spirit just say, this is my son. I'm pleased in him. And the enemy will try to get you to doubt as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You see your sons, you see your daughters, your wife, because I'm speaking to men, all messed up, and you want to doubt God for that. God ain't got nothing to do with that. And that's why I'm speaking to men here today. That we get our lives together. And you begin to follow God. You begin to repent and, and serve God. She's going to follow. Oh, she's going to kick and Bark and all that stuff getting there, you know. Like, oh, we weren't doing this before. All of a sudden, you Christian. All of a sudden, you want to go to church on Thursday? What the heck is going on? Football. Remember, football's on, you know. Thursday night football, you know. I'm like, Sunday, Sunday, oh, it's the, it's the playoffs, dude. Come on here. Here's your jersey. Put your jersey on. Here's some beer right here. They're fighting. They're kicking. They, they, but they look at, but they're still going, you know. Oh, man, I don't want to go. Kids, you guys don't want to go. Come on. You don't want to go. You know, but they go because they love you and they're going to follow you. We got to learn to be steady, steadfast. God has given you the headship. You're the head of the house. I don't care what she says. And she may be calling shots over you right now and all that stuff. I didn't get no amen. Says, okay. Praise God. <laughs> Because I know I've been there. I've been there when the woman leads the house. She leads, not leaves. She leads the house. Can I get an amen? amen. She, she, she's calling the shots. You know, you think that you are, but hmm, no. Unless you blow it and you start getting all crazy and then you put fear in her, okay. But for her just to follow you, her to respect you. What, is, what do men want more of anything, huh? Respect. We want to be respected. What does a woman want more than anything? She wants to be loved. She wants you to hold her hand. She wants to be a caress. She wants your arms around her. Remember that when you were dating her and all that stuff? 
kiss the French kiss and all that. When's the last time you, yeah, when's the last time you? <laughs> oh, I thought you, was, you hit it right at the perfect time. <laughs> you hit it right at the perfect time, huh? Uh, you know, the French kiss and all that stuff, it's, it's kind of, kind of freaky, you know, now, right, you know? <laughs> but God is teaching us a new way of living and a new way of thinking. When he talks about the kingdom, we think about the sixth, the 16th century, you know, the kings in the uh, castles and all that stuff, you know, all the physical about it, but it's not like that. The kingdom of God is inside of us. The spirit of God lives inside of you. The truth lives inside of you. The word of God lives inside of you. Kingdom living lives inside of you. And that's what we're learning as New Testament believers. We're not learning the law anymore. We, We keep the Ten Commandments. The commandments are still there to be kept. But we're not going to be stoned because we blow it. That's why God's grace came. And his blood covers all that. And that doesn't mean that we can do it. Because once you fall in love with Jesus, you know what? I don't want to do that. We want to live an honorable life. And not because I'm trying to get points. Not I'm trying to go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. If I blow it or not, I'm going to heaven because my faith is in God. My faith is not in my actions. But my actions should back up my faith. And my faith should back up my lifestyle. Amen. It should be complete as, as Christians. That's how we should be living in, in Jesus' name. We can't be saying and doing something all wrong and then over here, hallelujah, glory be to God. That's why our, our people don't come to, co- to church or co- come to Christ. Because we're the ones that push them away. Well, you said you were a Christian, bro. Yeah. You go. Hit that right there real quick. Yeah, yeah, Jesus is Lord. Yeah, yeah, he is, bro. Yeah. And they're like, what I think? What's going on? I said that to people before. They want to talk to me about Jesus, and when I was a heathen, I'm like, bro, bro, shut your mouth. My father was a pastor. I just say, shut your mouth. Don't even talk about Jesus. But live the life or don't. You got to sit here and get all guilty and that stuff. Brother, go somewhere else, bro. Just let me live my life, my vida loca over here, brother, over myself. And that's the way I lived. And that's why I say now I live for Christ in the same way. I love the Lord. I honor the Lord. And I'm not perfect, but I want to live a life that is holy toward God. He paid a price for you, Stevie. A precious. He gave his best gift for you. His son. Domino. Dominic, he, he gave his, uh, his best for you. And that's why I said we should be able to raise our hands. It's an honor to see Brother Art up here. Because you guys seen him in other ways, you know, other ways, right? You seen him on the ground, not because he was worshiping God, because he was out. <laughs> I can speak like this to my men because they, they know Pastor, that's Pastor. Because we try to make relevant the things of God. The kingdom of God is a being heavily minded. The kingdom of God looks at the heart of God and your heart toward God. God examines your heart and he wants to see your heart toward him. You say you love the Lord. How do we live? How do we honor God? How do you Respect your father, your natural father. You know, when we're young, we didn't like our fathers. Not Well, our father was a rough man. He slapped you across your face. You get whippings. You didn't get no three father, son, holy ghost. You got eight, ten, eleven of them. And where they landed, they landed, brother. You're like this. And whap, whap. I was telling him the other day, I said, I remember when you, I went to take a shower in the eighth grade. And my friends were like, what the heck happened to you, boy? The belt, boy, that's what happened to me. <laughs> you know, nowadays they'll go to jail for all that stuff, you know. And then, you know, amen, you know, but 
the kingdom of God is not a physical place. It's, it's within our hearts. It lives within all of us who believe. It has the power to transform our lives, to transform our hearts and our mind. And it's the kingdom of God prepares us for eternal life. We're Christians, but we're practicing Christians. We're practicing Christianity, just like a doctor. Don't think the doctor has the answers and all that. No, they're practicing on me. They cut me open already like four times in my life. Triple bypass, open necks, open new valves in the heart and all that stuff. They was all practicing on me. And they're telling me, we're going to do this. If you let us, we'll do this and we'll do that. And you're like, if you let me, you better tell me you can do this. <laughs> You know what you're about to do to me. They're practicing and you, you trust them. That, you know, I've done this already 15 times, 20 times. You know, I'm pretty good at what I do. Okay, so you let them put a new valve in your heart and all that stuff. God is doing the same thing in our lives, but he is the physician of physicians. There's no falter in him. There's no gray area in him. He's never faltered. He's never lied. He's never cheated. He's never sinned. God is pure. He's our example of life. And there's brothers who grow in Christ. And they could be your examples, but they're not your God. But they're here to be examples to you to Christ. Because you need mentors. You need leaders. You need pastors, apostles, and Evangelists, you need these type of men. You need deacons in the church that are seasoned men. They're not living one way in the, at home and then another way at church. If they do, and I find out, you won't be serving here. You can be in church here, but you're not going to serve as a leader. I'm not going to allow you to do that as a leader. We have to live our lives the best we can through the grace of God. Can I get any men? We're living a kingdom life. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then your citizenship is no longer in this world, but your, your uh, citizenship is in heaven now. You know you're going to heaven, right? No doubt, right? No doubt. What about you with the goatee, man? You know, what's your name? Peter. Ooh, Peter. <laughs> huh? Is Jesus your Lord, man? You going to heaven? That's right. All by faith. We do that by faith. Because if all of us went by our works, Pastor Al, <laughs> exactly, it's over, you're gone. <laughs> we live by faith, by trusting God that, you know what, I'm not going to be doing this for the rest of my life. I'm not going to be sinning or drinking or getting high and uh, 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 cussing all my life. It's going to stop. And you got to ask God, I, I need to stop this. Whatever your weakness is, is I need to stop. If you, if you love the Lord and you really want to walk with God, then you'll do that. If you don't, then shoot little dice with your life. See what you get. You get a 7-Eleven or you get the snake, snake eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I shot dice. I used to live in the projects. I was always shooting dice, make a little money on the side, a little Real quick, like, you know. <laughs> I just want to share a, real quick here. I had a lot to say, but I'm not going to say it all. I never have enough time to say what I have to say. And they said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In today's world, we know and recognize, identify, acknowledge the disorder and the confusion that we're facing as men of God. The devil went after our wives and the women before in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Remember when the women, we have a right to vote and we have a right to do this and we have a right to do that. So he went after them to try to take the position of a man and it, it worked somewhat. There's a lot of single women. That I think it's like 40, 50 percent. <laughs> a lot, yeah, that women are single they run the household and so when you try to come in mr christian you know 
after she's lived like this for 20 years, and you're like, well, we're going to pray. We're going to, what you talking about, Mr. Hallelujah? I've been doing this for a long time. You just give me your check, and we're going to be okay. <laughs> you know, I got it. But, you know, we have to. So the, the enemy tried to do that, and now he's coming after the man in the last days. He's coming after the identity of a man. Trying to tell the youngsters that, you know what, you're not a, a man, you're a female. You can make a choice to be what you want to be. You're not the head of the house. The woman's the head of the house. She's the one that makes more money than you do. So that gives her that position. No, it doesn't. God made you the head. That woman didn't get to choose. If she's doing that, then she's out of order. She's in rebellion. And if she's in rebellion, then she's sinning. She's sinning. You guys are going to say, hey, wait, never coming back. This brother going to get me in trouble. <laughs> There's order in the kingdom of God. So the enemy tries to use confusion and he tries to use disorder. And he's, he challenges us, the enemy, and these voices of all of what's going on in the world, the news, the gossips, the politicians, all these different voices that are coming at us left and right. And then the little voices you're, you're, you're fighting with you know, yourself and all that stuff that he's trying to take your identity as a Christian, as a believer. And that's why we have to be steadfast and firm in the kingdom of God. And you have to be steady, steadfast in what you believe, no matter what your wife says. You ain't got to argue with her. You just keep standing, knowing that, you know what, I am the man of this house. God put me there. God put you in that position. Even though you gave it to her, you can ask her back. tough even if they're more intelligent than us and they make more money than us it's still your position as a man of God to keep that house in order to keep that house full of prayer to keep that house full of love to keep that house full of joy and gladness because if you let her have the gladness and the joy <laughs> ain't gonna be a lot of joy <laughs> right and the ladies know, because I talk to our ladies. You've heard me preach many times. Ladies, it's, it's up to you how that household is running in the morning. If they wake up, boochie face, guess what the whole atmosphere is going to be? He's, Peter's like, <laughs> it's going to be boochie face, right? It's okay, brother. It's happened to all of us. You know, it's still happening. It's still happening. So we hear the voices of news of our parents, of our friends, our co-workers, and even leaders. But we must come to a turning point in our lives where we draw the line in the sand and we begin to ask God, what does he require from us? And he says, I'm going to give you a choice. God is a God of choices. That way you won't point it back to him. You made a choice. You made a decision to serve God and honor God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. You made a decision. Not her decision. But you're just going to follow God no matter what goes on, and God's going to line that thing up sooner or later. Amen? Just like Joshua, back in those days, he, he faced the same things we were facing. He was facing a, a, a culture that was different. And us too, we got to know, and I'm not talking about the African-American culture. I'm not talking about the uh, Hispanic culture. I'm not talking about the Anglo culture. I'm not talking about that kind of culture. I'm talking spiritually. This is not a Hispanic church here, but it's not. This is a Jesus culture. That's what we are, Amen. And that's how we should be as Christians. Should be no color. Should be the culture of Jesus Christ. 
what we believe according to the word of God. And we believe the word of God. So your culture now is a Christian. It's a Christian. A Jesus one. One like Jesus. That's your culture now. No, I go to that white church. I go to the black church. I go to the, that Mexican church. You're wrong. You just go into church. That's how you should be. I'm going to go praise God and honor God. Where the house is being blessed by the man of God and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where the truth is being taught. Don't sit comfortable in church because if you sit comfortable in church, you're in the wrong church. If you sit there all comfortable, like, oh, that was pretty good. Hey, that was all right. What's, what's next for lunch? What are we going to have? You don't even know what the word is. That means there was no challenge. There was no sharpening going on because the word is sharp and it cuts. And it enters cutting and it comes out cutting the word of God. But if we can sit here comfortable, like right now some of you guys are uncomfortable. Some of you guys are like, I'm going to be glad when this guy's done. Because I'm tired, you know. That happens to all of us. But where you're being challenged, where you're being fed at, is good for you. I didn't like vegetables. I hated, uh, uh, what was it called? Cabbage in the soup, in the Mexican soup, and, uh, the, the, and the, the res. Right? You get the, you get the uh, carrots and the tomatoes. It's like, uh, but, you know, your mom will like, whap. You know, you just slap your side your head, eat that. You're going to eat it. So you just would eat it, you know. And now as, as a man, you're like, I'm ordering that stuff. You're like, I want that stuff. Give me that. I want it, you know. And that's how it is when we're young. We don't want to hear the word. We don't want to know the truth. We want to live the life we want to live, right? But then as you begin to mature and you're not taking the milk no more, now you're taking some meat, some potatoes, I want that instead. I don't want the milk no more. Milk is good once in a while with the, you know, with the uh, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's all right. You know, me too. I like those. But I, I'd rather have some good, solid food. And that's what the kingdom of God is about. That's what Jesus did. He challenged the Pharisees and the Sadducees that, you know, the way you're doing it is not correct. You're beating these people with the law. You're telling them to do something that you're not willing to do. Jesus says, what I'm telling giving them is grace and love, spirit and truth. And the spirit and truth is going to set them free. And they're going to be able to live their lives. I don't, I don't force nobody here to follow God. I don't trust, I mean, I don't uh, force anybody to, I have to close my eyes and focus a little bit. Uh, I don't force people to give their tithes and their offering. If they give, they give. That's up to them. If you come to church on Thursdays and Sundays, that's on you. But if you call, you call yourself a disciple of ours here at Turning Point Fellowship, if you call yourself a leader, you're going to get a phone call. First, it'll go through one of the leaders. And then they'll tell me, like, that brother ain't listening right now, Pastor. I got him. So I just call him. What's happening, mijo? What's going on in your life? Why haven't we seen you here? And they'll tell me whatever excuse I haven't heard. You know, I've heard them all. You know, you hear them 20 years of ministry. You've heard the, mo most of all of them, you know. And these guys know that I don't like excuses. I'll, I'll take a reason why you're not coming to church, but I won't take an excuse. You know, there's excuses and there's reasons. Excuse why you miss uh, work. And there's a reason why you miss work. Your engine blew up on the way to work. That's a reason. But just because you woke up late and you feel like going home, oh, I'm already five minutes late, might as well just miss all eight hours now. You know, call and say, and then you give the phone to your, to your wife. Why don't you call my boss up here? Tell him I'm sick right now. Okay. You know, you even put on that voice and all that. She's like, well, I'm not going to do all that, you know. And you have a good wife, a woman, she's going to tell you, there you go. You're the man, remember? You're the head of that. Make the phone call. Talk to him. That's what a good woman's going to do for you. She ain't going to sit there and baby you. Amen? She's not. 
I'm going to have to stop here. So just like Joshua, men today are facing a culture filled, uh, a culture that's filled with, uh, with confusion and with a lack of clarity. But God is waiting for us men, the men of God, the men of the kingdom of God. He's waiting for us to make a, a choice, a decision. And it's your time to be accountable for your actions and your decisions. It's time for you to be responsible for your life. You can ask your wife, you want to go to church? I'm going to church. Would you like to go? You're more than welcome to come with me. If she says no, then I'm going to church. Amen. I'm going to go to church. We've got Bible study on Wednesdays. You know, ours is on Thursdays. Thursdays at 7. Put my little plug in there real quick. Thursdays at 7 p.m. <laughs> uh, you want to come? You give her the choice. And I'm going. I'm going to go with gladness. I'm going to go with here and everything, you know. I want my life changed. I don't want to live the life I used to live. I'm tired of living that life. Of broken dreams, broken promises. We all did that. It's time to put all that together and say, you know what? Let me live my life. And you live your life and you might blow it. But get back up. Dust yourself off. All right, let's do this one more time. Have you guys ever been in a fight, a fist fight? Some of you guys ever been in a fight? Yeah, I have. I've been in a lot of fights. You, you get knocked down. You get black eyes, you get busted nose. I don't mean you lost. That's just part of it. Just part of the fight, you know. And you get knocked down, you got to get back up. Because now you're going to get stomped. Because I, I fought some wicked people. Them brothers will take a foot to your head. Oh, for 10, 15 times, you know. And you just have to, yeah, man, you have to get up and say, you know what? I'm going to overcome this thing. I'm not going to let this happen to me one more time. He beat me up. I walked, I walked away from it, devil, but not this time. I'm, I'm facing this right here. You know what? I'm tired of this. I don't need that. I don't need that. And I don't need that. I'm going to live my life before God. I'm going to honor God. Amen. I'm going to honor God. Kingdom men are these right here. These kingdom men are those. I'm laughing at my men in the back. <laughs> they know why. Kingdom men are those who have made the decision to operate consistently. That's one of my big words here is commitment and consistency in this church. You got to be consistent. And you got to be committed to the things of God. You got to be operating in consistency under the uh, governance of God over his over the lordship of Jesus Christ. You got to Jesus can't just be your savior. He has to be your Lord. And a lot of us, the way we think that, oh, he's going to lord over us. He's going to tell us what to do. No. He's going to love you to do what, you, what you're supposed to do. He's your Lord. He's your God. Yes, he is. He's just and faithful to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we would just let him. He wants the Lord over your life. And not the way we think, like I said earlier. He wants to do it the right way and teach you the right way. And you'll become that man that you all. I became that man. I I dreamed of becoming. I wanted to have a sober mind, Dominic, because I was a pothead. I smoked pot every single day. I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I was bonging. I took a shower, get out. I was bonging again. You guys know what I'm, when I say bonging? I was bonging and dropped during a, a roll about two, three cigarettes, you know, because my grandkids here. And you just go, that was your, the break one. That's the lunch one, and that's the break on the way home. Yeah, so just stand all day long. Yeah, you know. And I'm gonna do this in your mind. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna become this, and I'm gonna become that. You know what? I'm not gonna do this job for the rest of my. I'm gonna be doing this. Yep. Twenty years later, we ain't did nothing. <laughs> Still doing the same old thing. Amen, amen. And it's Christians that happens to us. 
Huh? We, we don't do nothing with our, with our freedom. We don't do nothing with the wisdom of God. However, the decision alone is not enough. Just making the decision is not enough. Good, uh, good, uh, good, uh, what's the word? You want to do something right. What's it called? Good intentions. Good intentions. They're good. That's all they are is intentions. It's, you didn't do nothing. I had good intentions to go to church every Thursday. People, we did that right in De uh, November, December. My life's going to change. I'm going to do this year. 2024 is going to be completely different. Did we tell Jesus that and tell ourselves and other people? Amen, right? And then we don't end up doing it. It was a good condition, a good condition. Say it again. Intentions, good intentions. But that doesn't do nothing for you. It's your actions. Fulfilling your word. So you know what? I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go for it. And you have to keep your word. And you go for it. 29 years and I fought. And I've blown it many big times. I've shared some of my testimony with you guys over the pulpit. You know, things that happen in your life. And those 20 years of, of walking with Jesus, it's not perfect. You want to quit. You want to give up. You want to punch somebody in the face as a Christian, as a pastor? You do, man. You know, you want to just tell that young lady, shut your mouth. Please just shut up, man. But you can't. I'm talking to men here. Don't go home and tell your wife, you know, pastor wants you to tell you to shut up. <laughs> Gonna blame pastor. <laughs> I'm talking to men, though, right? Because... We think those things, but, you know, we ain't fools. You know. <clears throat> What's wrong? Nothing. No, no. Stupid thought just went through my mind. <laughs> oh, Diego, you're about to get married. <laughs> yeah. So decisions is alone is not enough. God wants men ready and willing to make a declaration, to personally declare the work of the Lord and the word of God, not just within yourself, but within your family, within your uh, uh, community of, of your work, of your household, that you know what? Imagine you go home and go uh, uh, right here where you can say right here, for you yourselves know this day that whom you will serve, whatever God's in that guy, blah, 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 that's not the one that I, what, did, what am I looking for? 14, mijo, where are you? One, yeah. The last part? Okay, I'm not reading it. Okay, yeah, there you go. In the land, then he says, uh, for as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Imagine you go home and you're all pumped up. That was a good service. Guess what? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. <laughs> or say it over here like you walk from my house we're serving the Lord what'd you say I don't know what'd you say little boy <laughs> no, we, no I'm making fun of it but we should we should be able to say hey honey I'm going to tell you that as for me and my household we're going to serve the Lord now and she may say you go ahead and serve the Lord because I was not with me I said I will serve the Lord. I will give myself to the Lord. And here I am today. And here you are today. Serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. Serving the Lord. And not one of us is perfect. But we're serving the Lord. Amen. And by you guys coming out on a Saturday, your wife, your girlfriends, whoever you have, is, is why your best friend is like, wow, Eric's serious about this stuff. This guy came on a Saturday, and he's here for two hours. My God. We watch football games, baseball games. You go to Angel game, a Dodger game, right? Three, four hours. Football game, three, four hours. And we ain't complaining. But at church, all of a sudden, you're here for an hour and a half. Like, hour and a half? That guy preached already for an hour. Did I get an amen back there? <laughs> 
You know, uh, 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 we do that. But this is the change of life that takes place now. I usually get here at church about 8, 8.30, I would say. When do we leave? About 6, 6, 7 o'clock. We stay here all day. All day. The brothers who say there are about 34 of us that will stay with our families and all that. And we eat. We have a good time. Put on the football games. Ladies aren't paying attention to the game. And some of the guys aren't either. They're playing games and all that, just enjoying the stuff. Having cake and thing, you know. They go get some more pizza and chicken after the second round. You're like, hey, who wants to pitch in for pizza and chicken? And we do that. And we, we're a family. It's a Sabbath day. Amen. We're supposed to keep this day holy. Our Sabbath is Sunday. You know, if, if you work Sunday and your Sabbath, your day off is a Thursday, then that's your day. That's the day you worship God. If you find a church that, you know what, online or, you know what, they go to church on, on Thursdays, I'm going to go over there on Thursday. That's my reasonable duty unto the Lord that I got to go. If it's on a Wednesday, then okay, I'm going to find a church because I work Sundays. So you, I, my church, I go during the week. Amen. You make that your choice as your Sabbath unto the Lord. So I just want to encourage you guys in, in the kingdom of God. You know, I know I went a little places. I only went to two things, but uh, two pages. But uh, stay, stay firm. Stay steadfast. Stay in the word of God. Stay hooked up with the fellowship. Like you guys all came together. Stay hooked up with each other. You know, if you guys don't have a home church, you can come visit us and see if you like it again. You know, maybe I wasn't your flavor today, but maybe next time I'll serve a little different, you know, word. Something like that, you know. Whatever it may be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, oh, wait to, oh, yeah, right there, yeah. Free lunch. Tomorrow, all you can eat. All you can eat. You can eat six. All you can eat. <laughs> Steve's like, he's like excited. Yeah. <laughs> That's how the Baruches are. Oh, we all get excited like this. <laughs> Gonna get a pizza? Yeah, baby. <laughs> but uh, 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 you see the men here. There, we have food left over. You know, so they're not gonna leave these guys. They're gonna go in there and kick back, and we'll be back there for another hour or so. You know, for the ones that have to go home and things like that. And but that's how we are as a church, Turning Point Fellowship. That's our culture here, to be as one, to be brothers in Christ, to love one another, to celebrate one another, to be a blessing to one another. We're not looking at your faults. These men are really not, I told them, if you see a brother that you haven't seen in six months, a year, don't ask him, where you been, what you been up to, and things like, your brother's good to see you, man. Welcome home, brother, you know, give him a hug. It's good to be here with you, man. Glad you made it. That's what you tell him. He came home like the prodigal son, right? The father celebrated him. He didn't say, hey, where you been? Are you, how much money you got left of my money? He didn't do none of that. We do that kind of stuff. But as a Christian, we shouldn't do that. Welcome, man. Tu casa. This is your house. This is the house of the Lord. Right? casas. Right, Brother Al? Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's a pastor. Pastor Al's a pastor there. Yeah, these, are, these are the guys that have been ordained. Andy's an ordained minister. You know? These guys are ordained, you know? We're going to ordain some men here this year, too. I got about three men I want to ordain here. Not as senior pastors, just ordain them in the house of God. They could help this church of God. They could help it grow. Amen. You, know? you guys all go ahead and stand up. You guys are all more than welcome to come tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. You're going to see all our children, the wives, and the girlfriends, the fiancés, all the families. And they're all going to walk in with, everyone should walk in with a something a dish, their favorite dish that would serve 10 people or more, you know. 
You know, we're not going to be serving a place like this. It's just something to eat. It's lunchtime. You know, but you can eat all you want to eat. Hot dogs, all the hot dogs you can eat, you know. Amen. It's a beautiful day out there, huh? They said it was going to rain. They're prophesying. Father, I just love you. I thank you and I bless you for your word. For the word of life that we call the seed of life, Lord. The seed of life, your word that has been dropped in their hearts. That that seed, Father, will grow, Father, and become a tree. A tree of life that will give fruit. That will give love, hope, faith, endurance, kindness, mercy, forgiveness. long-suffering, Lord. Let her learn, Father, to be glad and be help, uh, helpful, Father, and happy with the fruit that they eat of, Lord. Your fruit. The fruit of life, Lord. I thank you for every brother here, every father, every husband here, Lord, every adult, every young man here, Lord. I thank you for lives. I say and I declare, Father, that the goodness and the mercy of you, Father, have followed them all the days of their lives to this very moment. They can look back and say, God has been good to me. I have no, no ill feelings or anything toward anyone. I'm grateful for what God has done. I'm thankful life that I live today, Father. And I'm speaking to you guys in the third person. Father, I just thank you and I bless you for these men. I thank you that these know each other, that they're brothers in Christ. And no matter what goes on, no matter what size we are, no matter what height we are, no matter how thick we are, how thin we are, it doesn't matter. Teach us your ways, Lord. Teach us the truth. Teach us your way, Lord, your life. Teach us your truth, Lord. That's what we want this morning. We want more of you and less of us. More of you and less of us, Lord. Father, we walk away this place today, Lord. We'll, we'll be renewed because renewed because of your word. You have made us clean because of your word, Lord, that has been spoken today. Bless them, Father. Bless their weekend. Wherever they go to church tomorrow, Father, let them be the ones that walk in, Father, with a bounce in their, in their walk, Lord, with a smile upon their face, with a high five for our brothers or sisters. They say, what's, what's this about? They say, I was in the presence of the Lord. So I thank you and I bless you, Father, for their comings and their goings. Thank you for the divine protection, Father. I say no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires. Not even a ticket, Father, just a safe passage to and from this place, Lord. Bless them, bless their families, their children, their wives. Father, watch over them also. I pray in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful men say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hey, we're going to take a picture, guys. Before you leave it, let's take a picture of you. I want a picture of you, mijo. 